How's everybody doing this evening? Good? Man, well, what a nice little turnout we've had here. Hush, Brady. Hush. Uh, this is my partner in crime, Brady, to the left of me here. Everybody just welcome Brady to the stage. He wanted to take a little extra time before he entered. I don't know what... He had some dramatic entrance in mind. False. How many musicians do we have in the room? Boom, boom, boom. Not the protest boys, you don't count. The entire protest team. Are you saying we're not musicians? No, I'm saying everybody knows. I want to see the, the, new, the newcomers, people I don't know. See, when I was 16 years old, I wanted to be a famous Christian rock star like the protest. I did. Like Josh Renamund. I, yeah, that's what I aspire to still to this day. I look a lot like Josh Renamund. <laughs> I realized really quick, you know, sometimes it, there's nothing wrong with ambition, nothing whatsoever, but sometimes you kind of get lost in it when you're chasing your dreams and stuff, and uh, a lot of stuff can get in the way. And I knew that first and foremost, I want to be able to honor God with what I was doing. And when you're, when you're chasing this dream, it's very easy to get distracted with the tangible things, you know, like rock stardom, the Josh Bramlett's you know, persona that I was trying to achieve, and I just, I just saw it before myself, and it, and it just clouded, you know? I'm just playing. Josh, Josh is awesome. I was 16 years old, and I decided to go to this songwriting seminar to learn how to, it was, I, I don't think I should say the name of it, because I think they're still running this thing. But it was a seminar designed to teach you how to write hit songs in the Christian radio market, okay? So I thought, obviously, that's what I want to do, okay? These are, these are the experts. And one of the guys told me in this clinic, amongst a lot of other aspiring songwriters, he said, listen, you want to write a hit song about Jesus, all you got to do is write a love song about a girl. And then you take her name out of there, and you put Jesus in there instead. Boom. Recipe for success. Now, here's the thing about that. You laugh about that. The thing about that, he was not kidding. Okay? He made a lot of money in the industry doing that, doing that formula thing. And even as a 16-year-old kid, wanting all this advice, I remember thinking, okay, there's something, something off about that advice because this is not just me wanting to write songs. This is me wanting to write songs that glorify my Savior. So I, I don't think I can fake that, or at least not in a way that I would feel comfortable with what I was doing. And so I went away a little bit discouraged. But then years later, I meet the girl of my dreams, I get married, and she says something to me that I'll never forget. She said, about a year into the marriage, she says, you don't really write songs for me anymore. What gives? You know, you kind of you kind of wooed me. You know what I'm talking about, Kate? Have you ever, have you ever been there? So it's like, she's like, you kind, of, you kind of wooed me. And then, you know, after we got married, it's kind of all that stuff, the romantic stuff just kind of went away. And I tried to make excuses for it, okay? But I realized she was just so... Correct. This is what happened. I got used to it. Okay? I kind of, you know, I won, right? I got the girl. And so I relaxed, okay? I stopped going to the gym. You know? Gained my freshman 15, as they say. You've been to the gym before? How dare you? How dare you insult me this way? Don't talk to me that way. I've created this career path for you and everything. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. And, uh... And I realized, you know what, here's the thing. When it came to my wife, it was not good enough to stop chasing her and stop trying to fall in love with her. I had to continue to do that over and over and over again. For the rest of my life, I need to be falling in love with my bride, right? And it occurred to me, I like zipped back in time to when I was at that songwriting seminar, and this man was telling me the most bogus advice ever to write a song about Jesus. And I realized, you know what, this is a good guy. He just did the same thing. He got used to things in his relationship with God. He didn't have that daily inspiration to be able to pump out these songs. There's a lot of pressure on him to just make it happen. And that dude just needed to get reacquainted with a Savior he fell in love with a long time ago. And that's when I thought about writing this song. It's called Falling All Over. And it's just the same way in our relationship with our wives. We need to pursue God 
over and over and over again because I know the pursuit never stops from his end. So this song's called Falling Lover. Just like a sunrise Creeping through my bedroom window Opening my eyes To a brand new day I think I'm falling for you Just like a fire. 